We are live. This is the Total OS Today Show podcast right here on the terrific, terrific Linux Distro community.com. Now, this is a weekly technology podcast that begs the question why is Spatry on my show? Oh, that's right. It is news and nonsense. Hi, Spatry. That's right. You're listening to yet another fabulous Sunday night news and nonsense. And it's probably going to be more nonsense than news tonight. Hey, Total Us today? Okay, fine. You twisted my kernel, sure. Uh, all right, all right, all right. And we got a special guest, Myers G. Welcome to the show. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh, Spatry, you scared him away. Uh, I don't know why I would do such a thing, but uh, oh well, it is what it is. Well, I, I, I'll tell you what. Why don't you get us started? I suppose I can do that. All right. Red Hat says Twin Peaks in GPL violation, and they are seeking an injunction. If you remember, Red Hat was sued by a company called Twin Peaks over patent infringement. In its lawsuit filed in March 2012, Twin Peaks alleged that Red Hat and its newly acquired subsidiary, Gluster, infringed on its U.S. patent, uh, some big number here, Mirror File System. The patent was filed in 2001 and issued in 2008. And according to the patent description, a Mirror File System's or MFS, is a virtual file system that links two or more file systems together and mirrors between them in real time. Twin Peaks seeks injunction and damages for the alleged patents. Red Hat has now responded with an amended counterclaim against Twin Peaks software. Red Hat is using GNU GPL as a weapon against Twin Peaks in this court battle. Red Hat says in its court in its counterclaim that Twin Peak is violating the GNU GPL. And pretty much, um, basically, they're saying that there's uh, there's all this, um, you know, a, a lot of the code in their proprietary software was derived from open source software and that sort of thing. And so um, Red Hat is not only asking Twin Peak to comply with the GPL or the GNU General Public License, but is also seeking damages and permanent induction on Twin Peak products. If Red Hat wins, Twin Peak will be thrown out of business. What is it with you and patent news? I feel like I need to start my cricket sound effects again. It seems like I'm <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, I just pulled the news off of my favorite Linux news sites, you know, and it seems like there's a lot of stuff with patents going on in the world. But it is what it is. I mean, um, uh, but yeah. I, I'm not going to cover patents all night long, that's for sure. Oh, thank God. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the chat room and Voltam requests I do more sound effects like that. Sorry, Spatcher. You're goodbye. <laughs> no. Not that sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I can top your patent news, my fine patented friend. It appears that Microsoft has applied for a new patent for possibly a future, one of their future smartphones, a future feature. And apparently, Spatry, it's for all those people who like to spank their smartphone. Apparently, what the patent what this possible future feature does, this patent does is say your phone is in your pocket and it rings and you are too busy to answer it. You can spank your phone to silence it. What do you think of that? Oh, come on. <laughs> Good idea, though. Well, it is because, look, if it's in your pocket and, you know, it saves you the trouble of taking it out and possibly dropping it or doing something else honestly of all the nonsense frivolous patents that are out there feature patents i think this one would be kind of cool if my android phone had it and say i'm driving in the car and the phone's in my pocket or whatever and the phone rings i can just tap it now i would set it to something like when i tap it it silences it but i have like a pre-recorded message saying hey i'm busy call me back later bye but i think that's a cool feature 
Well, well, suppose, suppose you know, um, suppose you know, um, some lady has their cell phone in the back pocket and it's ringing, disrupting the meeting, and you know, somebody could just go over and just tap the lady next to him <laughs> on the behind. <laughs> uh, leave it to you to think that way. But you know what? That's actually pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but exactly, you know. Oh, but ma'am, I wasn't trying to be fresh. I was just trying to silence your cell phone for you. <laughs> well, if the, if a phone like that, like that uh, comes out with that feature, let the jokes begin. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, uh, more news. The much-awaited Linux game, Faster Than Light, has been released. Now, uh, for those of you who made a contribution to Faster Than Light on Kickstarter, you should have a copy of the game already. But the thing is, you can get this game at the very low price of $9 from the Humble Store, according to the article here on Ubuntu Vibes. You can just point the browser to ftlgame.com. It looks like a fun little game, and it's one of those outer space games, and uh, I happen to have a soft spot for those. So I'm definitely going to be pulling out my credit card for that one. Well, speaking of outer space, I know you like uh, science fiction movies, yes? Oh, absolutely. Well, I just got word this morning that the sequel to the Star Trek reboot, you know, a couple, a couple of years ago, which, by the way, was a terrific flick. Yes, yes. They're not, they can't really call it Star Trek 2 because there was an original Star Trek 2, but I believe the new one, uh, which they're filming now to be uh, released next summer, I believe it's called Star Trek Into Darkness. Now, talk about a dark title. Does that mean that the Enterprise and its crew is in the dark and has no clue like of where to go? Is it going to be more like shooting in this movie? But uh, it's, it's the sequel from the official title from what I got. I just, thought, I just thought I would let the Star Trek fans know. Star Trek Into Darkness. Well, you'll remember from the, uh, from the uh, last, uh, uh, you know, from the uh, new installment that was released, uh, pretty much, they pretty much you know, blew the entire timeline out of the water. So now they've pretty much taken, you know, Star Trek and made it completely fresh. So now they can pretty much do anything they want to. Planet Vulcan's not around anymore. So now, you know, uh, you know, and uh, different things. Well, I don't want to spoil it for all you people who haven't seen it. But, um, yeah. But the thing is, um, yeah, I, I think this is going to bring a lot of fresh ideas to the table for Star Trek, especially if they have some good writers. And and the thing is, not only, you know, we got Mr. Spock and then the older Mr. Spock. <laughs> uh, that's kind of breaking well, the space-time continuum It is science here. fiction. I stress <laughs> yeah. the word fiction, but hey, you know what? I'm sure it'll be fine, and I am looking forward to it. Yeah, I think that would be pretty great. Yeah. Well, uh, I have since we're on the topic on the science fiction movies. Are you, I'm sure you probably are familiar in seeing the classic sci-fi movie from the '90s called Independence Day. There is going to be apparently two sequels, Patrick. Now they have been talking about sequels for years, but apparently the star of the show, I believe it's Will Smith. Yeah. Well, he was asking fifty million dollars. That's five zero. And now, apparently, he needed that salary to pay for his new Nikes. <laughs> oh, gosh. Are we going back on that shoe story you brought up a, 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 no, a week no, or no, two no, ago? No, <laughs> no I, well, I just thought I would toss in that joke. But I, they have a title for the sequel. Now, this I, I don't understand this, but it's, it not, it, they're working on two sequels. So it's going to be called ID Forever Part 1 and ID Forever Part 2. Now, my joke is or my thinking is how many forevers freaking are there <laughs> yeah um i don't know about that one i don't know either but i enjoyed the uh you know the original but apparently nothing's in written in stone there's no contract but those are the working titles and uh, id forever you know you know we are into a uh, voting season now with the presidential election that sounds like an id for that sounds like a voting slogan or something i don't know yeah, well, hey, more power to him. Looks like Myers is in the house. Are you here? Yeah, I'm here. What you got? It is on Intel's Clover Trail. Uh, it's a new upcoming version of the low-powered 
uh, Atom processor that's intended specifically for use in tablets. The Clover Trail will be a Windows 8 chip and cannot run Linux. It was reported in July that the company ha had no plans to support Android to work on Clover Trail tablets. It is though possible that the Linux kernel doesn't conform to the requirements of the new chip's power management technologies, but they gave no reason for not supporting Linux. Boo! Well, guess what? If it becomes popular enough and people go out and buy these things in droves, I can, I'm willing to bet that, um, that, that, you know, the kernel developers are going to step up to the plate and get some support for it. I mean, come on, folks. Linux runs on more devices out there than anything Windows can run on. I mean, you have... Uh, I, I can't even name all the architectures that are available, but Linux runs uh, runs on uh, so it's, many of them. It's more so, than yeah. one. Yes, more than one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it goes beyond, you know, they have, you know, and just to name a few off the top of my head, you know, you've got the, uh, you got the, uh, into, you know, it'll run on Macs, it'll run on ARM, it'll run on Spark, whatever that platform is, I, I've seen it before anyway, and, um, and there are tons of other ones uh, that Linux runs natively on, so it wouldn't surprise me in the least. Yeah, they may release a, a piece of hardware that they're not going to provide any Linux support for, but the thing is, given time it will well I have some more nonsense news but we uh, before I do that you mentioned about the uh, gaming you know we are almost into the pre holiday season shopping already uh, I guess Nintendo is coming out with the next generation uh, we call the Wii U boy that sounds so wrong but anyway this will have a gamepad controller with a with a touchscreen I, th I think and it'll retail for a reasonable uh, $300. So all you uh, parents out there looking for a new gaming console for yourself or for your family, uh, that sounds pretty reasonable. Um, I have an Xbox uh, and my son has a, a, a Nintendo. And I got to tell you, that motion control thing, you know, if you're looking for a workout, need to lose weight, or just want to work up a sweat, the Nintendo with the motion control is terrific. Maybe they should call it the PU if it doesn't sell very well. <laughs> I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> you knew that was coming. Come on. Surprise. No, but the Nintendo makes a good product. Um, I've played, I've done the boxing stuff with my boy and, the, you know, baseball. And you know what? It's it's not high def, at least not the original, but it is, it is so fun. You know, it's family friendly. It's terrific. And we'll see what happens with the, P I mean, the Wii U, excuse me, the Wii U. I'm just making fun, Nintendo. Please don't sue us. The Nintendo Wii U. P-U. I mean, uh, yeah, that sounds great. Oh, shut up already. <laughs> Well, guess what, kiddies? Spatry's Cup of Linux is one year old, and Spatry is going to be celebrating this year his uh, one-year anniversary by creating a full and comprehensive boot camp series on Ubuntu Precise Penguin. Everything you want to know about Ubuntu will be covered in this series, and uh, I'm planning a minimum of 15 episodes. But we may get a little bit further. I am going to get detailed, and Alan Pope himself even challenged me not to use the command line in this series. Uh, I don't know about that one. We'll see. I, I love you too, Total OS, today. <laughs> Voltem dared be blaming on him. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, let's see. Well, let's keep on the nonsense. Uh, I have another, I have some more uh, movie news. Well, Spatry... Uh oh here it comes. Hey, don't blame me. I don't make movies, okay? But apparently... Uh, no, boy. you don't. <laughs> Thank you. Spatry, uh, there's going to be another Godzilla sequel. Oh, Christ. Coming out next year, and it's I, and it's going to be a 3D Godzilla 3D. I heard about this in the morning news on the radio because I set my clock radio to you know wake up to various news. 
Now I'm thinking, really, another piece of go- now the original one, you know, the the campy, the black and white that was done back in the fifties. I actually enjoyed that, you know, you know, I mean, you know, back then there was no CGI graphics and all that, but I I really enjoyed the first one. The sequels after that, and the last one in 1998, I thought the the special effects were terrific. But the story, yeah, insert cricket sounds here. Oh, come on. That, that Godzilla 2001 that came out then, yeah, the special effects may have been looked a little bit better, but you could still tell it was some cretin in a rubber suit. No, 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 not that one. The one, the uh, the crew, the director that made Independence Day, the one that came out in 98, that one. That one had okay special effects, not the one out. Yeah, there was another one after that, wasn't there? No, this one was done, was filmed right after they released ID for Independence Day, and it was done by... Uh, I'm going to say the writer's name are Dean, Devlin, and Roly, Roland, or something. But no, that one was okay with the special effects. But getting back to Godzilla 3D, and I, I thought of something. I thought of a, a good plot twist for Godzilla 3D. If they're going to shoot this in 3D, I would love to see Godzilla in 3D go to the bathroom with one big pile of shiznits in 3D. Now, that would be a different plot twist. You know what 3D stands for, don't you? No, but you're going to tell me. Dull, dumb, and dopey. Well, there you go, folks. That's the, <laughs> <laughs> that's the trailer for Godzilla 3D. And you forgot the last one. Dump. You'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll kiss $15 goodbye. But a pump but a beat. <laughs> and you'll be saying, I want the last 90 minutes of my life back. No, you cannot have it back. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, Voltab's in the chat room saying, why isn't Spatchery reading here today? I don't Uh-oh. know. Oh, hold on. Let me uh, pull up IRC. I have it minimized right Uh-oh, now. Uh-oh, Spatchery, you get two demerits for school tomorrow. Shame on you. Well, this is your show, not my show today. <laughs> you should be reading IRC. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, but yeah, but uh, the boss, the godfather, Voltam, is not too happy, okay? Hi, Voltam. All right, let's see, Spatry, while you're doing that, what else do I have here? Oh, Armageddon was just mentioning some other, other uh, platforms and that sort of thing. Uh, yes. PPC, AMD, um, is also going the same way as Intel going, uh, they're releasing hardware that will not run on Linux. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if Microsoft is putting these companies up to this stuff, you know? You know what? I I really don't know. You know, we've talked about this before, and it's, you know what, this is so, like, we talked about this in Preach, at all this stuff, you know, patents, this is so not user-friendly. Yeah, well, the thing is, this is just another tool that, um, that the, you know, um, that Mafia Soft, I mean Microsoft, is using for <laughs> vendor, <laughs> vendor lock. Hey, hey, yo, 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 hey, yo, yo, don't insult the Godfather, okay? I gotta, I gotta, I gotta thank one of my viewers. He actually, uh, he, yeah, he actually, Bing, yeah. One of my viewers on my channel uh, said that, and I was like, oh my goodness, I saw that when I woke up at five o'clock this morning, and I was looking at my email before heading into work, and I, I just, I. I lost it when I saw that Mafia soft. Now it's like, oh my goodness, that has got to be so true, you know? <laughs> Boy, that's going to give the Italians like me a very bad name. Come on. Mafia soft. <laughs> well, let's see. What else do I have? I have some random news stuff off topic, not technology news. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, excuse me, but I'm doing the uh, sound effects here. You know, two can play at that game. Oh, wait, it's my show. Why am I doing that? Duh. <laughs> okay, let's see. I have some random nonsense news. Um, Spatry, a mailman in Florida. Now, I, I used to live in Florida. A mailman gets fired for selling cocaine on his route. A policeman has been fired for excessive speeding on the highway. And you can just stop me any anytime you want to. Uh, let's see. What else? I Oh, uh... Or- Spatcher, you really should drink more laxative. Wait, that's really bad. <laughs> Go ahead. Keep going. Keep going. Okay, let's see. Where did I leave off? Okay, the mailman, the police. Oh, oh boy. I used to live in Orlando for almost 10 years. And, I've, I, you know, I went to Magic Kingdom and, you know, and Universal Studios. They're very, 
very fun place to be. But Spatry, I heard the news that the Magic Tink, the Magic Kingdom, and this is not a joke. This is what I read: is going to start selling booze. Yes, that is the truth. I was listening to that on the radio today. Um, they are going to. Uh, they they have a, a restaurant that will be serving alcoholic beverages, but it will be only open during the evening. I had a vision of Mickey Mouse and his breath coming through his suit. Well, never mind. Yeah, I think it's a. I, yeah, I think it's a. Yeah, Donald Duck, <laughs> drunk Donald Duck. <laughs> I love Donald it. drunk. There we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, what else I have here? Oh, this one kind of threw. This one is again. This is off the news wire, not pertaining to technology, but a a high school. The faculty has banned a student from wearing his rosary beads because they are considered a gang symbol. What? Yeah, I think that's kind of weird that, you know, that they're saying that this can be um, used as a gang symbol, but maybe kids are now, you know, um, you know, you know, maybe kids are, maybe they do have some violent gangs. That you, I can't imagine a violent gang using a rosary, though, as a symbol. You know what? I certainly hope not and i think the school system can uh, probably use a little bit ubuntu which means humanity towards others right now uh, pdq stated that um that the kids must be wrapping them around their hand their hands and using them like brass knuckles and uh the distro junkie said uh, jesus belonged to both gangs first he shed his blood and then he rose from the crypt that is very appropriate. Yes, thank you. Yeah, very good one. Thanks for pointing that out. Yes, sir. Well, let's see. I think, Spatchy, I have run out of nonsense news. What else do you have? Um, well, now PDQ is saying that we need some uh, politics. Well, uh, let's see. We have a few minutes. We have about five minutes left. What does PDQ suggest? Um, well, um... He has said we covered religion, so we need some politics. And uh, really, I don't watch anything in the news much. Well, I do have a little bit of political news. Uh, one of my favorites, uh, uh, guys, who was not um, running for president this year, Jesse Ventura might be running for president in 2016. Yeah, now that might be uh, interesting. Um, oh, you know, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I understand he did a really good job of uh, decriminalizing marijuana in Minnesota. Well, I don't know that. Oh, by the way, PDQ says Jesse Woot. Woot, Woot. Yeah, I think Jesse is uh, terrific. I would certainly vote for him. He's a he's a he's a the t the type of guy who has who speaks a lot of common sense. He belongs to no political party. His show, which I think they've wrapped up season three, Conspiracy Theory, uh, season Good one. Good show. Is, yeah, I mean, I mean, at the very least, I'm not saying they're all conspiracies. Conspiracies are all true. That's up to you. But at, at, at the very least, the show makes you think. Exactly, PDQ gets people thinking. And for those of you who have not seen his show, here I am plugging his show. Why not? The show he did... Yeah. On how Wall Street, you know, Wall Street, and and uh, and and basically how Wall Street raped America with their, you know, bunch of shiznits. That's one of the best. And it, and and the one thing about that show, you don't have to be a Wall Street guru to understand, you know, how the financial crisis came about. But he, but he does a, a terrific job explaining it, how it worked, and basically saying to the American people, wake up and what's going on out there. Uh, yes, Distro Junkie says, Jesse says what he means and means what he says. I, I totally agree. So I'm hoping, uh, I, I believe Jesse stated, now I am not a spokesperson for Jesse. I believe he stated if, if he can get his name on the ballot in all 50 states, he will run as long as there's no money, as long as, as long as there is no political money thrown that way. Now, I'm not sure how that works, but basically what he's saying, I think, if the people, the common folks, us, rally together to put his name on the ballot, then he will run. I'm all for it. Yeah, I think it would be a great idea. Yeah, why not? Totally agree. 
Well, Spatry, on that note, that's all I have. What about you? Yeah, I'm just sitting here um, having a little nibble while we're having our little conversation here. Sorry, I don't mean to talk with my mouth full. <laughs> oh, you're full of it, all right. <laughs> well, I think we are done. Myers, do you have anything else if you're still with us? Uh, yeah, God, I do have a uh, YouTube account, The Ubuntu Nerd. Thank you. Folks, check out Ubuntu. The Ubuntu Nerd. Is, is that correct with the the in front? Yep, The Ubuntu Nerd. Okay, terrific. Of course, uh, check out uh, Spatry's Cup of Shiznits. No, I'm just kidding. It's Spatry's Cup of Linux. Thank you. Uh, terrific Zoo Crew show every uh, Saturday night. I missed that one, yes. but I think, I think I can make it next week. And, of course, the Total OS Today channel. Uh, Spatry will be starting a new series, like you said, the Ubuntu uh, Boot Camp. I think I have. I don't really have a boot camp, per se, but I've done extensive ones on Linux Mint and Zorn, if you want to check that out from previous shows. But the, So basically, folks, if you are new to Linux, as in you are a Windows user and are completely new to Linux, you are, you've come to the right show, to the right place. We welcome all users. You know, the Ubuntu Linux operating system and Ubuntu stands for humanity towards others. Totally agree with that. That's what we are here for. Don't be embarrassed if you if you know nothing about Linux. We will help you hold your hand, per se. So, on that note, Spatry, you are free to take us out. All right, and you're right about that. You know, anybody is welcome to join us here on the Linux distro community. Even if you're not using Linux just yet, and you just have a few questions that you want to ask somebody, you know, we are here to help you. You can check text chat with us on uh on IRC or you can talk with us here on Mumble and then of course uh, Total OS today has uh, he, he runs Ubuntu as his main operating system on uh, some of his computers and he's got a whole series of tutorials and now I have decided to come up with a comprehensive uh, tutorial set so that because because we know Windows 8 is coming out at the end of October, it is going to be hitting store shelves. A lot of people probably aren't going to like it, so we really, really need to have a comprehensive series up on Ubuntu, a step-by-step -step from beginning to the end. And I think this is a wonderful idea, and I think it will be the best way to not only celebrate one year of um, putting out videos on YouTube, but to also fill a real big need that the community is uh, going to need, you know, the, 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 you know, to help people find the answers they're looking for. Uh, Total OS today, thank you once again for a wonderful show. Myers, thank you for joining us, and I'd also like to thank Voltem and the Linux Distro community for uh, hosting us here. And uh, thanks everybody who's uh, joined us in the listening room, and thank you Armageddon and everybody else, uh, PDQ and everybody else who uh, participated in IRC. We will be here same time same channel next week. We will see you then. Ciao. You did that with class. Thank you. Ciao. Now get off my mumble. Where's my crickets? Oh, wait, it's my show. <laughs> I gotta stop doing that on my show. Jeez. <laughs> Goodbye.